Welcome to History Uncovered, where we delve into the stories and events that have shaped our world. In this episode, we turn back the pages of time to the epic of the Roman Empire, focusing on one of its most renowned figures, a man who single-handedly altered the course of history and set the stage for centuries to follow. We're talking about Flavius Valerius Aurelius Constantinus Augustus, better known as Constantine the Great. Join us as we journey back to the tumultuous era of late antiquity, a time of great change and upheaval, where empires rose and fell, and new ideologies emerged. We'll be tracing the life of this extraordinary ruler, from his early days in Illyria to his rise to power as the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity, forever changing the face of the Western world. Get ready to step into a world of political intrigue, military genius, and religious revolution. This is the story of Constantine the Great, the man, the myth, the legend. So, sit tight, keep your toga on, and let's journey back to the vibrant, violent, and transformative world of the late Roman Empire. Welcome to the world of Constantine the Great. The narrative of Constantine the Great is a tale punctuated by both intrigue and triumph. Our protagonist, born as Gaius Flavius Valerius Constantinus, enters the world stage at Nisus in modern-day Serbia, his birth date shrouded in historical mystery, somewhere between 272 and 285 CE. Raised within the confines of the imperial court due to his father's influential positions, Constantine grew up amidst a whirlwind of political and military machinations. His potential was recognized early on, an ambitious youth pulsating with energy and a keen understanding of a ruler's dual role, defending the empire and creating a just society. The year 305 CE marked a significant turning point in Constantine's life. In a stunning political maneuver, the senior emperors Diocletian and Maximian abdicated their thrones. However, the transfer of power didn't favor everyone. Maxentius and Constantine, both with considerable claims to the throne, felt egregiously overlooked, sowing the seeds for a fierce and enduring struggle for imperial dominance. In an attempt to placate the disgruntled Constantine, Galerius allowed him to serve under his father in the west, leading him to the shores of Britain in 306 CE. There, under the shadow of his father, Constantine gained crucial military experience, campaigning against the Picts and earning the impressive title of Britannicus Maximus for the second time. Constantine's reign as a compassionate yet ruthless leader began in earnest after his father's death during his attack on the Franks in 307 CE. He showcased his capability for swift, decisive action, his willingness to mete out harsh punishment, yet his readiness to restore fairness, which endeared him to his troops and began to build his burgeoning reputation. As the Western Empire grappled with the vacuum left by Constantius' death, an array of claimants jostled for power. The Augustus title, hoped by many to fall upon Constantine, was instead granted to Severus, a friend of Galerius. But that didn't deter Constantine's troops from declaring him Augustus, a title Galerius would deny, naming Constantine Caesar instead. In the ensuing chaos, Maxentius, another overlooked claimant, proclaimed himself Augustus, bolstered by the people of Rome and the Praetorian Guard. The Roman Empire's western realm thus descended into a fractious power struggle, with no fewer than six individuals claiming control at various points. The alliances and rivalries that followed resemble a game of chess. Constantine and Maxentius, wary of Severus due to his ties with Galerius, joined forces with former Augustus Maximian. Severus, outnumbered and abandoned by his troops, met a gruesome end. Galerius' subsequent attempts to regain the West failed, and a new political order was forged with Licinius as the Augustus and Constantine as the Caesar. However, this tentative stability was short-lived. Maximian, who had been serving as Constantine's advisor, emerged from retirement, dubiously claiming Constantine's death and crowning himself Augustus. But Constantine, very much alive and away fighting the Franks, promptly quashed this rebellion, resulting in Maximian's suicide. Simultaneously, Maxentius, once a beloved figure in Rome, was losing his grip on power. His tyrannical rule, culminating in a bloody massacre of Romans, sparked outrage and unrest. Constantine seized this moment of instability, gathering an army of 40,000 and marching towards Italy, setting the stage for the next pivotal chapter in his remarkable life. 
The pendulum of power in Rome swung definitively in favor of Constantine following the pivotal Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312 CE. According to accounts, Constantine looked to the sky on the eve of the battle and saw a radiant cross bearing the words, and hoc signo vinces, or in this sign, conquer. This divine vision purportedly continued into his dreams, with Jesus Christ instructing him to carry the cross into battle. Thus, Constantine's troops entered the battlefield, their banners emblazoned with the Christian symbol. Despite being outnumbered, Constantine's forces emerged victorious, while Maxentius, in a dramatic turn of fate, drowned in the river while fleeing to Rome. This decisive victory marked not only Constantine's complete control over the Western Empire, but also his unprecedented fusion of the state with Christianity, a pivot that historians acknowledge as a significant turning point in history. As the newly minted Western Augustus, one of Constantine's first acts was to proclaim the Edict of Milan, extending toleration to all religions, a groundbreaking decree that would later be co-signed by Licinius. Meanwhile, the Eastern Empire was embroiled in its own power struggles. Galerius, the Eastern Emperor, died from cancer, leaving Maximinus and Licinius vying for control. After a series of battles, Licinius and Maximinus partitioned the Eastern Empire. However, this temporary truce disintegrated in 313 CE, culminating in a decisive battle on the plains of Thrace. Like Constantine before him, Licinius brandished the sign of the cross, seeking the support of the Christians against Maximinus, who had vowed their annihilation. After his victory and the subsequent suicide of Maximinus, Licinius sought to solidify his position, ruthlessly executing potential rivals, including the offspring of Galerius, Severus, and Maximinus, and even Diocletian's daughter. Despite an uneasy truce brokered by a marriage alliance between Licinius and Constantine's half-sister Constantia, conflict was inevitable. Constantine defeated Licinius twice in the battlefields, once in Sibeli in 316 CE and again near Hadrianopolis. Licinius's worsening treatment of Christians further spurred Constantine to act. He assembled an army and delivered a resounding blow to Licinius in another battle at Hadrianopolis. Fleeing the battlefield, Licinius was finally cornered and defeated at Chrysopolis in 324 CE. Despite his initial concession, Constantine rescinded the promise of Licinius's peaceful retirement. In a chilling turn of events, Licinius was executed in 325 CE, along with his young son, extinguishing the last vestiges of opposition to Constantine's rule. With this final victory, Constantine stood unchallenged, the master of a reunified Roman Empire. Having single-handedly reunited the Roman Empire, the 52-year-old Constantine ushered in an era of stability. Yet, the city of Rome, rich in history and culture, was not the city he envisioned for his capital. Despite numerous building projects to revive its grandeur, Rome was decaying and no longer served the practical needs of the empire. Furthermore, Constantine dismantled the once elite Praetorian Guard, further distancing himself from the old capital. Nicomedia, the capital of his predecessor Diocletian, was similarly discounted. Thus, the search for a new capital began. Constantine briefly considered the ancient site of Troy, but it was the city of Byzantium that ultimately captured his attention. Byzantium's strategic location on the European side of the Bosporus Strait allowed control over access to the Black Sea. Its superb harbor, the Golden Horn, added further allure, not only for its commercial potential but also for the ease with which the city could be defended. Determined to manifest his vision, Constantine marshaled resources and artisans from across the empire. Wide avenues took shape, adorned with statues of great figures such as Alexander, Caesar, Augustus, Diocletian, and Constantine himself. He reinforced the city's defenses with rebuilt walls and ensured its self-sufficiency with new cisterns. In a unique blend of old and new, he commissioned the construction of Christian churches, including the Hagia Irene, alongside pagan temples. By 330 CE, the city was transformed into a Christian capital that still retained its classical roots. Thus, the ancient city of Byzantium was reborn, laying the groundwork for what would become one of the most significant cities in human history. Throughout his tumultuous years of warfare in the West, 
Constantine displayed a surprising degree of religious tolerance towards both pagans and Christians. Despite worshipping the sun god in his youth, he claimed to have been a Christian since his victory at the Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312 CE. His mother Helena, a devout Christian, had significantly influenced his faith. Once he became emperor, he even sent her on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, where she commissioned the construction of the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. While some historians argue that Constantine wasn't baptized until his deathbed, he consistently projected himself as a devoted Christian. He is often credited, though some credit Emperor Theodosius, with making Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. This claim remains contentious, as pagan symbols of Sol Invictus and Mars continue to appear on his coins. Religious freedom under Constantine, however, was not absolute. He forbade pagan sacrifices, seized temple treasures, ended gladiatorial contests, which Christians opposed, and abolished crucifixions. He also enacted laws against sexual immorality and ritual prostitution. In 325 CE, seeking to unify the Christian faith across the empire, Constantine invited clerics to the Council of Nicaea. The council's landmark outcome was not only the condemnation of Arianism, but also the formulation of the Nicene Creed, which defined the Christian belief. Yet, the very next year, in 326 CE, Constantine's faith would face a significant test. He was led to believe false accusations against his son Crispus, from his first wife Minervina, of committing adultery. These accusations were made by his second wife, Fausta, who was reportedly in love with Crispus. After Crispus was executed and it was later revealed that the allegations were baseless, Fausta committed suicide. This tragic incident would leave Constantine with a deep sense of regret for the rest of his life. Constantine the Great continued to prove himself as an effective military commander throughout his reign. In 328 CE, with the help of his son Constantius II, he fought and defeated the Alamanni. He used a strategic approach to subdue the Goths in 332 CE, opting to starve them into submission rather than engaging in direct combat. He also managed to reclaim territories from the Dacians, although these territories were eventually lost after his death. One of his final wishes was to conquer Persia after their king, Shapur II, invaded Armenia, but this wish was never fulfilled. In 337 CE, after ruling for 31 years, Constantine fell ill and passed away. He was buried at the Church of the Holy Apostles in his beloved city of Constantinople. His legacy lived on through his three sons, Constantine II, Constantius II, and Constans, who inherited his empire. Constantius II, however, would eventually overpower his brothers and take control of the entire empire, carrying on the legacy of his father, Constantine the Great. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of one of history's most transformative figures, Constantine the Great. His legacy continues to influence our world today, from the city of Istanbul, formerly Constantinople, to the spread of Christianity as a major world religion. Thank you for watching this episode of History Uncovered. If you found this video informative and engaging, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from the past. Your support enables us to continue uncovering these remarkable historical events and personalities. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications so that you never miss a new video. We have a lot more history to uncover, and we're excited to share these stories with you. Stay curious, keep learning, and we'll see you in our next video. Until then, goodbye and take care.